Hey everyone, I'm Ultima456, you're the ultimate, so welcome to episode 8 of Let's Platinum Elden Ring. Alright, we want to go in this general direction, but I think we want to go back here. We get a little bit higher. Oh, it's raining. Uh, okay, did I... yeah, all these guys are dead. Alright, so I'm actually going to do what I sort of reversed last time, and that is to use this to get up here. And now I'm going to head in this direction. There's another teardrop. Ah, okay, yep, this is where I want to go. So I want to jump down here. Let's see if I can... Yeah, this is pretty safe. And the reason is there's a bunch of sarcophaguses or sarcophagi here. And in each of them is a different degree of golden rune. So let's collect that. What is that over there that I'm seeing? just the trick I think it's just a trick of like the the graphics or something it almost looks like there's a an event that I've never seen there before I'll go there in a sec anyway if I could ever and it's it's sometimes it's so hard to control torrent okay one more there we go all right now for this next one we want to go over there in that direction that I was talking about uh, okay, it's a little risky, but I'm going to try it. Cool. Uh, let me try and go around this one instead. Go. Good. Alright, cool. Make it over here. What is going on? Okay, it was just the lighting there. Collect these ones as well. Good. Uh, I forgot to mention, but in the... I think I put a note in the previous episode. Uh, when you use uh, Patches' chest um, and get teleported, you become trapped. And you can only uh, fast travel once you find another grace point, which I, I did in the Third Church of America. Okay. And I'll grab this. This is a Fever's... or Fever, I don't know how to pronounce it, cookbook. And it gives you Sleep Pot. That's pretty cool. You can throw a sleep pot and it puts an enemy to sleep. Uh, let me just see if I can... I was supposed to... Am I supposed to do it from here or... Hang on a sec. Oh, it's there. Okay, cool. Uh, let's go over here. Let me just make sure that I'm doing this right. Yep. Okay, so we're going to meet an NPC here and he's going to talk for a bit. Is anybody there? Someone who might be interested in rescuing the great Kenneth Height, servant to the true order and celebrated repudiator of the false. Oh, Ertry, grant me succor. Okay, let's talk to Kenneth Height. Ah, you come to lend me your aid, have you? Well, that's that's very kind, but um, no, no, the help is very much appreciated. Even from a tarnished. Despite appearances, nobility is no prerequisite to serving the true order. You might have heard of me, Kenneth Height. Next in line is the rightful ruler of Limgrave, Young Tarnished. I would have a boon of you. I want you to take back my fort. It lies to the south, beyond the Mistwood. A knight commander from Stormvale took it. A fool and plumb mad to boot. Simply obsessed with blood. What are you waiting for? A kiss goodbye? My fort lies to the south, beyond the mistwood. Take it back for me. Oh, I see. You wish to know the reward? Fret not. The great Kenneth Height is known for his considerable largesse. The celebrations will be lavish indeed upon the dawn of my fort's retrieval. Yes. Now, allow me to furnish you with a little advice. I would take great care to avoid Godric's tarnished hunts were I in your shoes. That depraved lot are obsessed with sacrificing tarnished like you for the sake of grafting. Honestly, Godric's nothing more than a jumped-up country bumpkin. Lord? Oh, don't make me laugh. 
First, he hid himself amongst the women folk to flee the capital, then hid from Radan in that castle. Then he insulted Melania, lost to her in battle, only to lick her boots rather than die like a man. <laughs> Has he no shame? The big girl's blouse. And to think, he's the blood of Godfrey, last of the golden lineage. Though you almost wouldn't know it to look at him. Yeah. I almost feel sorry for the chap the more I think of it. What are you waiting my okay. for? Okay. So yeah, we need to go to the Mistwood. Uh, sorry, we need to go to the fort in the south of the Mistwood. Um, but he was talking about Godric the Grafted, who we will eventually meet. Uh, Alright, let's see if I can take out these demi-humans with a good old fashion if I could get my buttons to work properly. Ground slam! Ground slam. <laughs> Pretty good. Come on, come on. <laughs> One more. Nice. Take this. Almost done. Yay! Alright, let's see what we got. Anything good? Glowstone, glass shard. You can get some magic grease here. That one's already here. That was pretty good. That's that goes to show like how Grand Slam actually can be pretty good. So yeah, it, it was a little risky, but it, it paid off. Uh, let's go get that Grace Point over there. Quickly take a swig. All right, so we will go to the fort in the south of Mistwood, but not just yet. What I want to do. I want to get that grace point, and we're going to go up here, following this road. And we want to hop up there. Because there's something that we can get that uh, will give us an item in a moment. Let me just see. Yep. So let's just climb this. Up. Go to the right. There's a teardrop scarab there, but it's just a replenishing health one. Or replenishing uh, the the flasks. Okay, so in here there's another grace point, and you'll see that there's also a painting. This painting is interesting. How this works? Another little puzzle that the game offers you. Okay, artist's shack. So if we examine this, it says homing instinct painting. So if we look at that in our inventory in the notes section or info section, it says. Reminiscence of the painting homing instinct, uh, homing instinct Examine using square Work of a wandering artist Reminiscence of a painting titled Homing Instinct This painter is said to have captured the landscape scene During the last moments of those welcomed into death's embrace The soul of the painter and vestiges of the dead's last moments Can be discovered by visiting the location depicted even now Okay, cool So we need to find where that location is uh, We've actually passed by that location So let's go straight there let me just make sure... Yes, okay. Uh, we're gonna go to the first step, which is where we started. It's actually really close to where we started. And now, turn around, head down here, and if we carefully drop down to this area below, you can hear these people screaming here as well. Everyone is screaming because, well, they're in pain. Alright, so if we look here, this is exactly where the painting was describing, had that those gravestones. We have this person here that appears because we now have the painting. And we can pick up the incantation scarab. I'll just show you that painting again. So there it is. And it looks exactly like that. Oh, it's a bat. <laughs> I was like, what is that? Is that a bat with... That might be... Let me try something. So if you notice, this bat might actually have different colored eyes. And if that's the case, I'm going to use Barrage on him. So you hold L2 and then you just press R1. Nice. Used up all my... Yeah. Sometimes they'll have gold eyes and if they do, uh, it means that they'll um, provide a few more runes than normal. All right. Anyway, let's get out of there. Go back to the Church of Ella. Oh, I will read that incantation scarab. It's actually a headpiece, uh, believe it or not. It reduces your 
um, like protection and stuff by quite a bit, your damage negation, but it increases resistance by a fair bit as well. And it says slightly reduces the FP cost of incantations, but increases damage taken. And it says gold and scarab worn directly on the head. These scarabs roll clumps of incantations during their labors. As a scarab approaches death, it abandons its rolled treasure and stretches its wings wide for the long journey to its home nest. Okay, so now that we're back at the Church of Ella, let's talk to this guy, to Kale, and see what he has to say. It's you again. Always a he can tell us about the howling that we heard in Mistwood, so let's uh, hear what he has to say about that. The howl of a wolf in the Mistwood. I suppose he must still be skulking about. I know. Why not meet him for yourself? Next time you hear the wolf's howl, Make this signal right under the source. Oh, don't fret. There is nothing to fear. I just have an inkling the two of you might hit it off. Okay, and we get the finger snap gesture. Goodbye for now. So, he said basically if we make this gesture underneath where we heard the howling, we can meet this person. So, let's actually go do that. This is a, the beginning of another quest. Side quest, whatever. That we can get. So let's head over here. Oh, okay. Be very careful with these bears, especially I mentioned in the previous episode, don't kill any bears. That advice was just because they're very strong right now, but definitely don't kill any of these large ones, these rune bears. They seem to be all over the place at the moment. Um, and the reason is because they actually have an effect on what we're doing right now with this character, apparently. I'm not entirely sure if it's the case, but apparently they do have an effect. Okay, so he's right over there, so I'm going to stand right under here, and I'm going to go to the right, to gestures, change bow, and pick finger snap, which is this one here, back out, and then press X to do it. And he drops down, and he is enormous. Let's assume our guy is 6 foot, this guy is like 12 feet tall. Let's talk to him. Who goes there? Carly sent you, did he? Ever the bloody busybody. Hmm. Maybe to him you don't seem so strange. The name's Blythe. I'm looking for a man who goes by Darrowell. He fled somewhere nearby. Or so I've heard. Come tell me if you find him before I do. I can offer you ample reward. Darrowell is nothing but a traitor. And in need of a fitting end to his tale. Darrowell is okay. in need of a th That's all he says. So his name is Blythe. Um, it's spelt B-L-A-I-D-D, -D, but pronounced B-L-Y-T-H-E, I guess. Um, and he's looking for someone named Darrowell. Let's go to the Agil North uh, Grace Point for now. And let's have a look. Okay, I can't tell if it's nighttime. It doesn't look like it is, but uh, let's be on the safe side and just change it to morning. Cool. All right, and now we're gonna head south. You want to make sure it's nighttime. Oh, sorry, not nighttime because this bridge that we're gonna to come to has a powerful enemy that spawns only at night, and we're not gonna fight him just yet. We want to be a little bit stronger before we do. Let's take these guys out. Always one health. <laughs> This guy just ran away. And he had something on him. Oh, Rowan Fragment. Okay. So there's also a uh, Teardrop Scarab here. Let's get it. Nice, this one didn't even move. He dropped the Ash of War Determination. Decent Ash of War. It sort of increases your... Oh gosh. Okay. I think it's like, it's like a stance type of move and it increases the damage you deal. After you use it. I'll read it in a sec, actually. I never explained that prattling pate hello either. Wait. Is that... Is that the guy I'm trying to avoid? <laughs> or is... He looks slightly different. No, I think that's just... Yeah, that's just a normal guy. But he looks different. 
Uh, I mean, it looks the same. Uh, so prattling paint, hello. Twisted clay sculpt in the shape of a human head. He emits a voice that says hello. A wistful fetish that imparts voices and words on an eternal journey. So let's use it. Hello. <laughs> uh, and what was the other thing? I've already forgotten the ash of war. For determination. This ash of war grants an armament the quality affinity and the following skill determination a knightly skill hold the flat of the armament to your face and pledge your resolve powering up your next attack usable on all melee armaments so yeah nothing too special but it's there okay let's also take this guy out swing 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 smack that was well timed swing 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 smack missed all right well at least now i know it's three swings and time that wrong one, two, three, smack. Take that. When he's lying on the ground like that, with his like chest up in the air, you can perform a critical hit as well. You have to make sure that you got that guard break on him, but you can do that. Nice, got a bleed on him too. Okay, before we move, before we move further down, let's grab this, which is smithing stone one. And we can actually grab another item. I think it's over here. There we go, yep, this guy on the chair. Collect a somber smithing stone one. So that's good, another one of those. Okay. Now we want to go... Okay, so there are some <laughs> enemies coming this way. In a large, like, cart. Or oh, they're, like, pulling a large carriage. Two of those stone digger trolls. Fortunately, they're not too aggressive. It's sort of the guys around them that are aggressive. They will be aggressive if we do start attacking them though, so let's go around. Go this way. Keep going, keep going. We definitely want to make a few fire pots for this area because there's this big flower thing here. And the way it works is it's weak to if I could... No! Hang on. <laughs> yeah, it does that move. That's what I wanted. But it is weak to fire, so if we throw that... It's good. And what we'll do is we'll use our Flask of Wondrous Physic. Take this. Mm. Trying to get the charged attack to do some damage. <laughs> Not really working that well. You can also perform a smack attack. Oh, nice. Come on. Ah, okay. I actually broke his stance, which is weird to do for a flower. But you can do that. He was performing another attack there where he was going to emit a whole bunch of poison. Um, if you throw a fire pot at that point, it will um, pre prevent the attack from continuing. So there's the poison. Oops got poisoned but if we fire pot it just dissipates immediately so good to know that one I could probably use a better weapon for this but for now I'm just gonna have to stick with this use another fire pot I hate getting rid of these things they're really annoying there we go so with the flask of wondrous physic you can only use it once and then you have to restore it at a um at a uh, grace point so but it does last for a while like at the moment if you look the top left icon on my under my stamina bar is my axe talisman taking effect it's the extra charged attack damage and then the symbol the green square uh, that's the third one that's my stamina increase and the one next to that is the charge attack increase from the flask and as you can see it's still active like i used it i think it lasts for about three minutes I'm not 100 percent sure but Seems to be around three minutes. Okay, we're almost out of time. I should probably clear this poison out. Just want to collect all the items that are here. At the moment, I think I've got most of them. There's an item up there, and in order to get it, we can hop up here with Torrent. Uh, how is it? Actually, kind of forgotten. I think it's on this side. Yep. So if we go around the back of this area, up, up, 
pop. Grab a whole bunch of ruin fragments, and then what you want to do is you want to just walk off the edge right about here. Just walk forward. Don't even jump. And then collect Trina's Lily times four. It's something. Okay, and let's hop into here. And in this area, you know what? Let's uh, neutralize. And since we're already at 20 minutes, I'm actually going to do this next time. Sorry about that, but yeah, I want to leave it for next time. <laughs> okay, so for now, I want to thank you all for watching episode 8 of Let's Platinum Elden Ring. My name is Ultima456, you're the ultimates, and I'll see you next time.